Hi, I'm Mike. We're going to start our bird tour of Capital Land Trust properties here at Bayshore Preserve near Shelton, Washington. Bayshore has three different types of habitat here, but we're going to begin with the birds that we can see down by the water. One of the things that makes our region special is our shorelines and estuaries, and Capital Land Trust has done remarkable work by conserving 16 miles of shoreline in the South Puget Sound. Healthy estuaries, tidelands, and beaches make cleaner water, healthier fish and wildlife, wonderful places to explore, and a safe refuge for birds. An estuary is where a freshwater stream, creek, or river meets salt water. These are important transitional zones where salt and fresh water mix with sediment to provide a nutrient-rich habitat. And where we have nutrients, we have invertebrates, fish, mammals, and birds. Some of the birds that we find in our marine habitats are here year-round. We're all very familiar with our local great blue herons. They are very common in South Puget Sound, and while we can find them in a variety of habitats, they are often seen along the edges of our estuaries, patiently waiting for fish that happen by. Bald eagles are a common sight on Capital Land Trust properties, and they nest very close to Randall Preserve, where they have easy access to fish in Mud Bay. In the winter, they congregate at Bayshore Preserve and Twin Rivers Ranch Preserve to take advantage of the chum salmon that have spawned on the creeks there. I love winter birding here in South Puget Sound because we have so many beautiful ducks that use our shorelines for shelter. At Bayshore and Randall Preserves, you can see buffleheads, common golden eyes, lesser scops, stunning hooded mergansers, northern pintails, northern shovelers, and surf scudders. In the summer, many birds take advantage of our shorelines. Migrating swallows nest in boxes that land trust volunteers have installed near our beaches. These include violet green swallows, tree swallows, northern ruffed wing swallows, and stunning purple martins that nest in loud communal groups. Caspian terns are another migrant bird that dive for fish off our shorelines during the summer months. Near Bayshore Preserve, there is a pair of nesting ospreys that have easy access to Oakland Bay for a steady supply of fish for their young. While exploring this wonderful preserve, you can hear their chattering call as they fly overhead. In the fall, our shoreline habitat is an important resting spot for migrants heading back south after breeding in the Arctic. On the beaches and tidelands, we'll often find western and least sandpipers, greater yellow legs, Dunlin, and even rare vagrants like snow buntings that make a brief rest stop while heading further south. Now that we've looked at some of the birds we can see on our shorelines, let's visit Mary where she's going to explore the wetlands of Darling Creek Preserve. Another special habitat type that Capital Land Trust conserves are freshwater wetlands like this beaver pond behind me at Darling Creek Preserve. Sometimes we might think of wetlands as these smelly, mosquito-infested areas. Yes, they can have a bit of a scent, and they do have mosquitoes. But wetlands are also these magical and incredibly diverse areas that actually do a lot for humans too. To give a short definition of a wetland, wetlands are areas that hold water for all a part of the year. Marshes, swamps, and bogs are all types of wetlands. Capital Land Trust's Darlin Creek Preserve conserves 70 acres of wetland habitat in addition to over 200 acres of recovering forest. Wetlands are some of the most biologically diverse ecosystems on the planet. Wetland ecosystems can produce huge amounts of food in the form of plants, insects, and other invertebrates like fish, amphibians, and mollusks. In addition to this great bounty of food, Shelter, water, and nesting locations provide migratory and resident birds with the essential habitat they need. 
A whopping one-third of North American bird species use wetlands for at least part of their life cycle. I absolutely love birding in wetlands in the springtime. The marsh comes alive with the commotion from this great diversity of birds. Let's talk about some bird species associated with wetlands that you can see and hear at Darling Creek Preserve. Red-winged blackbirds are some of our more common wetland birds and can be found across almost all of North America. They live here in Washington year-round. Listen for the male's distinct song in cattail-dominated wetlands or other types of wetlands. You might hear a marsh wren in the same type of habitat as the red-winged blackbird. Spotting this little brown marsh wren is really special for me because they can be so well hidden in thick marsh vegetation, but their song is so loud it will often lead you to where they are hiding. Okay, so the wood duck. Wood ducks are truly a sight to behold in a wetland. With the attention demanding feathers of the male and this really beautiful, delicate beauty of the female, this is a, a duck species that you don't want to overlook. And really, how could you? The Virginia rail is a chicken-like bird with gray cheeks, a reddish bill, and cinnamon-colored neck. They tend to be most active during dawn and dusk hours, so that is the best time to look and listen for them. You'll want to look for breaks in the marsh vegetation where there is a good line of sight and move very quietly and slowly. This bird has many adaptations that allow them to move through the impenetrable vegetation of the marshes that they prefer. They have long toes for walking on saturated soils and floating mats of vegetation, and also their bodies are laterally compressed, and they have flexible neck and back vertebrae that help them sneak their way through thick vegetation. The green heron is one of my favorite herons. They're a small heron that can be seen stalking prey, usually along the edge of a wetland. I really love the green heron's moody kind of coloration of greens and blues and purples. When you're in a wetland, caref carefully scan the banks looking for a small hunchbacked bird with a long straight bill staring intently into the water. The green heron is actually one of the few tool using bird species. Interestingly, they can create fishing lures that are used to entice small fish. In addition to fish, the green heron eats insects, spiders, snails, and even rodents. When I was photographing this American bittern, it was my first time ever ever seeing one and I could just feel my heart racing because I was looking for this bird in particular. I just didn't think that I would be lucky enough to see it because their camouflage and secretive nature require so much patience and observation. Um, but for me that day, it just, it paid off. Um, so the American bittern is mainly found in shallow freshwater marshes with tall vegetation. When they're threatened, the bittern um, elongates its neck and actually sways with the breeze to blend in with the reedy surroundings. And when I had seen this for the first time, I just thought that was the coolest adaptation because they really do just blend into the landscape. Slowly scan the edge of a marsh and this bird just might materialize for you too. Wetlands are extremely important for migratory birds such as the willow flycatcher. Willow flycatchers are long distance migrants from Mexico, Central America, and Northern South America. Their arrival to the United States is announced by their sneezy Fitzbue song. As their name suggests, you can find these birds in willows and other shrubs along wetlands and streams, but they are also known to nest in drier, scrubbier areas in the Pacific Northwest. Without these wetlands, many birds in North America would not be able to complete their life cycle. A large portion of the endangered and threatened bird species in the United States rely on wetlands or wetland functions. For wetland-dependent species like the wood duck, Habitat loss may directly result in loss of birds. Now let's check out the oak woodland at Bayshore Preserve and the birds that live there. 
Now I'm back here at Bayshore Preserve, just a few hundred yards away from the shoreline, and we're going to explore the birds that we can find in the unique oak savanna habitat that Capital Land Trust has conserved. Oak savanna is habitat that was created when the glaciers flattened the land and then retreated north 15,000 years ago. This combination of flat grasslands and oaks was maintained by indigenous people with controlled burns and provided excellent hunting grounds for many Salish Sea tribes. Bayshore Preserve is one of my favorite places to look for birds, just because there's so much diversity. Over 122 different species have been reported here, and that includes many of our most common South Puget Sound birds. At Bayshore Preserve, you can see both of our chickadees, the black-capped chickadee, and the chestnut-backed chickadee. Bush tits are one of my favorite local birds. At just one-fifth of an ounce, they're the smallest songbird in North America. And you can find swarms of these birds at Bayshore Preserve flitting through the oaks or eating seeds in the grasses. Ruby-crowned kinglets are another small bird that like to forage along Johns Creek in the fall and winter. You can see both of our local jays here, too. The gorgeous Stellar's jays, and California scrub jays can be seen as they squawk raucously to each other. In the winter, buried thrushes come down from the mountains and their ghostly whistles can be heard throughout the preserve. Bayshore is also home to three of our local wrens. Wrens may be small, but they make up for that with their songs. All of these wrens like woody debris and shrubs, and they'll often come out to scold you as you dare to walk past their territories. House wrens are brown drab birds that have a chattering call and are usually pretty shy. They are found along the edges of the grasses, just like the next wren, the Buicks. Buicks wrens are loud, boisterous birds that have many different calls, but are easily identified by their bold white eyebrow. And in the wooded areas of Bayshore Preserve, you can also hear the incessant chattering of our forest-loving Pacific wrens. Grasslands are great habitat for our local raptors, too. One of those raptors that you can see here is the smallest falcon in the United States, the American kestrel. These small birds weigh less than seven ounces and hunt for crickets, grasshoppers, small rodents, and even other birds. They can be found perching on the tops of oaks here at Bayshore, searching for their next meal. A larger raptor that we can see in the grasslands on Capital Land Trust Preserves is the red-tailed hawk. These are our most common hawks in western Washington, and they hunt larger prey such as rabbits, ground squirrels, snakes, and other birds. They can be seen soaring high overhead, and can be identified by the distinctive band on their bellies, and sometimes, but not always, you can see their red tails. The oak trees at Bayshore Preserve also provide critical habitat for our native band-tailed pigeons. Oaks are especially important for these migrants as they fill their bellies on acorns before they head south for the winter. In September, a flock of band-tailed pigeons can strip oaks entirely of their crop of acorns. Finally, our grasslands are also home to barn owls. We have nesting barn owls at two Capital Land Trust properties. Twin Rivers Ranch Preserve on Oakland Bay and at Inspiring Kids Preserve on Henderson Inlet. And they've also been seen here at Bayshore Preserve. Barn owls depend on our remaining wild grasslands and mowed fields for hunting. They soar at night low over the grassy fields and use their excellent hearing to find voles and other rodents to feed their noisy owlets. Now we're going back to Mary where she's going to talk about the birds that can be found in her forest habitat. Riparian areas and associated upland forests are the last types of habitat I want to highlight and are also fabulous places for birding. Riparian is another word for the strips of vegetation that border a body of water, like the willow trees along a river. Upland forests occur where there is enough soil drainage to where they do not become saturated for an extended period of time. 
Riparian and upland forests are conservation priorities for Capital Land Trust because healthy, functioning riparian areas and these associated upland forests do so many things. They stabilize soils, they can filter out sediment and pollution, reduce runoff, which of course improves the water quality, and also moderate water temperatures, which is really an important piece of keeping a healthy ecosystem. These are all things we as humans need to lead healthy lives, and they also provide habitat for, you guessed it, birds. Let's take a closer look into some of the birds that call our Pacific Northwest forests home. So first I want to highlight one of my favorite groups of birds, the warblers. Riparian forests provide essential breeding and migration stopover sites for these magnificent, colorful creatures. So some warblers you might find in western Washington forests include the common yellow throats. This warbler can be found across most of the United States during breeding season. The black-throated gray warbler. The lovely small yellow Wilson's warbler with his little black cap. The yellow warbler with its magnificent red striping on the chest of the males, of course. The orange crowned warbler, which is one of our more subtly colored warblers. And they do have a small orange patch on the very top of their head. The yellow rumped warbler, which some birders fondly refer to as butter butts because they have a small yellow patch right at the, the base of their tail on their backs. The Townsend's warbler. And the McGillivray's warbler. So let's dive into some of our resident birds or birds that live here year round. One of the most common songbirds you'll see in our area is the song sparrow. Song sparrows can be identified by their russet colored streaks on their heads, around the eyes, and on the breast. Their song varies regionally, but usually begins with a few loud, well-spaced chip notes, followed by some trills or buzzes. They can be found in an enormous variety of habitats, but they tend to nest near the water. Speaking of water, the American Dipper is America's only truly aquatic songbird. American Dippers are chunky, a grayish brown color songbird with a short tail and white feathers on their eyelids. Perfectly at home, among river rapids, the dipper can actually dive and swim underwater in search of aquatic insects. They nest near moving water like a river, um, under bridges, or even waterfalls. You can find these amazing songbirds at Hilburn Preserve near Shelton as they perch on rocks, bobbing up and down in that dipper way as they forage for caddisfly larvae and other invertebrates. Another year-round forest resident that I couldn't do a presentation about birds without talking about is the spotted towhee. Spotted towhees are among the most widespread and familiar birds in North America. This large sparrow can be recognized by their red eyes, their black head, wings, and tail. Females are a grayish brown shade. Both male and female have a beautiful rufous coloring on their sides. Spotted towhees spend a lot of their time on the ground which is their niche, making them really easy to see, especially for kids or maybe a beginning birder. You can often find them by listening for their industrious scratching in the leaf litter on the forest floor or even in your garden or local park. They can look really similar to the American robins, but notice the different beak and eye color. The ruffed grouse are year-round residents in riparian forests of western Washington, um, but they might move short distances seasonally to check out maybe better food supplies or a better protected roosting site. Males attract the attention of females by rapidly beating their wings.
Back when ornithologists were first studying the ruffed grouse, there were all kinds of theories thrown out about how this bird can make this sound. And what it turns out to be is that the air rushes beneath the wings, which creates a miniature vacuum that causes this deep drumming sound. As we move away from the riparian forest and into the upland forest, we can find one of the biggest forest birds on the continent, the pileated woodpecker. Look for them in older forests dominated by coniferous trees like the western red cedar. You may hear them first by listening for their steady, deep drumming, which is slower than other woodpecker species. Some other woodpeckers have a really rapid drumming sound. Their flaming red crest and large size are key identification features. So going from one of the biggest to one of the smallest. At only seven inches tall, the tiny northern saw wet owl is a fierce predator of mice. Because it is nocturnal, they are hard to find. So listen for their high pitched call January to May when they are looking for a mate. I could go on and on about the amazing forest birds that we can find in our area, but the last forest bird that I'll feature is the western tanager. The western tanager is a migratory songbird that travels at night, amazingly, from Mexico and Central America to Western North America. So we're pretty lucky here to have these western tanagers because not all places in America have them. Males have a flaming orange-red head, while females are a paler yellow. Even with the bright head of the male, the species is often inconspicuous as they seem to prefer hanging out in the shade at the tops of coniferous trees. So that would be the Western tanager's niche. A good way to spot them is by listening for their loud, hoarse, rising and following song of two, three, or four note phrases. I absolutely love the Western tanager. The first time I ever saw one was on a Capital Land Trust property and was able to stop and take this photo. We are so lucky to have these special places conserved through Capital Land Trust. These critical habitats improve our communities and provide important habitat for wildlife and birds. By watching birds and learning about their behavior, we have an opportunity to reconnect with the natural world, which is something we could all benefit from. Capital Land Trust has four public access preserves that you can visit on your next birding adventure. Two preserves are in Shelton, Washington. The Oak Grasslands of Bayshore Preserve is on Oakland Bay. And Hillburn Preserve is a wonderful riparian zone located next to Highway 101 at the city center Matlock exit. Randall Preserve is a great place to see shorebirds and wintering ducks and is in West Olympia, right on beautiful Mud Bay. And the wetlands and forest of Darling Creek Preserve is south of Olympia, near Capitol Forest. We hope that you've learned a little bit about some of the birds you can find in South Puget Sound, and that you're inspired to go out and explore Capitol Land Trust properties on your own. Happy bird watching!